subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. I'm here today with violin maestro and legendary musician Dr. L. Subramaniam, who is trained in both Carnatic music and Western classical music. Dr. Subramaniam, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so what you're holding in your hand is an ancient instrument that was made in 1699 um, and it's worth millions of dollars. But before we get into the historical significance, would you mind playing a little something for our viewers? That was incredible, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. So just a little background for our viewers. This violin is called a Stradivarius, which means that it was made by Antonio Stradivari, who is part of a well-renowned um, family in the 16th and the 17th century, known as the Stradivari family. And uh, so can you just explain why this violin is more superior in sound than, let's say, the other violins that you've played? Antoni Stradivarius is probably the most respected and mostly regarded the best violin maker any violinist heard of. He has made so many instruments, only a few of them, a couple of them, 200 to 300 is rotating. He he made more than 600, I was told. But the beauty of the instrument is like uh, the tone, the warmth. Even after so many years, he lived, you know, for 90 plus years, 97 years. He passed, he died in 1699 or something like that, 1697. But the violins which were made during that period, 6th, 17th century, still sounding so beautiful, still being played. And most of the greatest violinists in the history from that period, even today, they all play this violin, they sought after this one, because everybody who becomes a great violinist or mostly known violinist, everybody desire is to own or at least to play on one of these violins. This is a very, very, very special instrument. Mm -hmm. The secret of the varnish, nobody knew, because everybody says, you know, nowadays with computers and all the facilities, they can make instruments, but yet the original Stradivarius is original Stradivarius. Mm. There is a museum in Cremona where there's an exhibit, all the instruments which he used to measure and make the violin is all displayed there. The whole Cremona is uh, sounds, I mean, resounding with Stradivarius name. There's a Stradivarius square, there's a big statue there. There's so many violins. If you see, there's, you know, there are top layer and the mm -hmm. bottom layer and this side things called ribs. These are all different wood spruce and maple is used and here is ebony. But the wood, what he selected, probably he would have selected after many, many years of keeping it to get seasoned. Mm -hmm. And also you must be a genius to select the tone of the wood by tapping because nowadays many people can just, every wood has a sound. Right. So many times people say, you know, uh, there's uh, close to D vibration, a D pitch. Mm. Many people try to select wood for many of the instruments now. Because this kind of wood, he must have selected the best tone, best vibrating wood. He must it was genius to know that. Then made it accurately what he wanted with precise instrument which he made. And all the thickness of the top, thickness of the bottom wood, there's a bass bar which on the left side, inside, there's a sound post. There are so many things, beautiful things, complex things are inside. It's not a piece of wooden box which is played. But there are so many inner detail, the placement of the bridge, all those things. Earlier Stradivarius had a shorter neck when during his time. Okay. So after modern time, when the whole style of violin playing and composition changed, they had to make the neck a little different, a little longer. 
So they re- either they patch the neck, neck, we call it neck, this part, or modified the neck. But in spite of it, the sound continued because the sound box, which is basically the top and bottom base of the uh, the violin and the ribs, all those things, the placement of the bass bar, placement of the sound post, which is like a cylindrical wooden piece which is inside, mm. which all those things very meticulously calculated and needed it. And the, the final secret was the varnish. How we made the varnish, I mean, those days, you know, even in our tradition, many times the Ayurveda and everything, people mm. don't tell their children, only to their children or only to their prime disciple, they tell the secrets. Otherwise, it becomes a family secret. They don't tell it to anybody. So I think Stradivari, what he used or what it is not, it is not a common knowledge. Mm-hmm. So maybe the varnish also has something, something secret which they have to figure it out. But whatever said and done, even today, when you pick up a Strad and play, the tonal quality, the carrying power, it, there are a lot of violins which are loud, which are powerful, which are beautiful. The beauty of Strad is, it is not only beautiful, it can have a smaller, thinner sound or broader sound, but the carrying power. Mm. When you play in an orchestra with 80, 90 people, the solo is, as you know, in the West, they don't use microphones, they don't use amplification in a concert hall. Mm. The concert hall, they are all built acoustically treated so beautifully, so you don't need a microphone. So when you play with the 80-piece or 100-piece orchestra, the violin solo is who is going to be play a single instrument. In the behind there will be, you know, probably 40 violins playing or, you know, all the string section playing, but still you can hear his uh, or her tone. It has that carrying power and that beauty. That is the speciality of the violin. So, sir, you, right before this, you were talking a little bit about low tension strings and high tension strings. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about that? Yeah, basically, I was telling for Indian music, which we are doing, we use slightly different uh, tuning, which is slightly lower uh, pitch tuning. Because the reason is we have to use a lot of microtones, Mm. we have to use slides, we have to use repeated notes, which is not that much, uh, not used that much in Western music, like... uh, like this kind of repeated notes. Uh. All these slides, when we use in a higher tension string, it's, you, can, you can cut your finger mm. at the skin. Right. So that is part of the reason, because our music requires a lot of microtones, a lot of polyrhythm, or even plucking like while you are playing. So like that, when you try to do it, you have to be careful. If it is higher, you can cut your finger. Mm. So we don't use this tension. We play in a lower tension. Mm. And the violin strings which are made, these are regular violin strings, which are good strings made in the West. We don't have violin strings which are made in India, which are that quality yet. Mm. Nor the violins, not yet. So, sir, you spoke about also a festival, an annual festival in your father's honor. Could you speak a little more about that as well? Yeah, I think earlier when I mentioned my father was my guru, teacher, and I became a violinist because of him, because I wanted to be like him. After he passed away in 1990, December, we started a festival called Lakshminarana Global Music Festival. The first concert happened in 1992 with Emma Lakshmi mm-hmm. singing the prayer song and lighting the lamp. At that time, we were fortunate to have uh, some of the fantastic musicians as patrons. One was Lord Ekudi Menuhin. Mm-hmm. He, a lot of Indians knew him because of his yoga. He was uh, well, then first prime minister's friend, Pandit Nehru's friend. Then since then, we have had a lot of great, great violinists. Some of them we were fortunate to have brought their own strad, which include Ekudi Menuhin. There was another very, very great violinist who's 90 plus now, uh, Ivri Gitlis. 
There is another uh, violinist from Norway, Arve Talafsen. He studied in Juilliard and with under uh, one of the greatest teachers, Galamian. He came to India to play some of my pieces with me. He brought a strad. Then recently, one of the fantastic Russian violinists, um, this generation, Vadim Repin, he came to India two years back with a strad. So, I mean, for our people, they hear something which they normally cannot have an opportunity to listen. Mm -hmm. Because listening in a recording or a video or audio is different. When you listen in a concert, it is a whole different feeling than the emotion of being there with other people and the carrying power of the instrument and also the balance. Whenever you play any run or anything, each and every note is crystal clear in some of the violins. In some violins, some notes will be muffled or, you know, not that clear. If somebody speaks everything very clear, if you heard, if you hear every word so clearly, it is so beautiful. Some of the words are muffled, you don't hear. Similarly, in music also, when they play strad, if a good player plays, every note is so crystal clear. That is the beauty of the strad. In addition to the carrying power, it is very balanced. So we have had the festival, the, this is the 29th year. We have had the pleasure of having many, many orchestras, symphony orchestra from Latvia, orchestra from Leipzig Philharmonic, and some chamber orchestras. This 29th year, we are bringing a Spanish orchestra. We are playing on the 4th in City, 4th January, 6th in Hyderabad, 8th in Pune. So this will be the 29th. Next year will be the 30th year. We have, we have already brought a special book which was given to our uh, previous president, uh, Pranam Mukherjee, received the copy after this 25th year of the festival. At the 30th year, we are bringing another book of the last five years' development. This festival started in Chennai. Now we do it to six, seven cities within India every year. One concert, the same group many times is taken to different cities. We go to, sometimes we play in different cities. This time we are playing these cities. Earlier we, we are played in Bombay instead of Pune. We went to Calcutta, we went to Kerala, we went to Tamil Nadu and all those things. So this season, three concerts with the orchestra, three concerts without the orchestra, mm. with a global fusion with foreign artists, great artists are coming. Then we have also started doing it in different parts of the world. We have done it over 50 cities and 25 countries wow. and all over the world. Recently we did in San Diego. Every year we do it in Houston. Mm. So this festival is a very, very special thing for us and probably the best known festival and we get best coverage and we, when we did the last festival live stream from Bangalore, we had over a million viewers for the live streaming. So that festival is the most popular and most written about festival. And must be close to your heart as well. Yes, close, one of the closest mm. to my heart, yes. And uh, it's coming up on Jan 4th, I believe. Jan 4th in City 4th, Delhi, mm -hmm. 6th in Hyderabad. It's a fantastic auditorium in Hyderabad, Shilpakala Vedika then 6th in Pune, 8th in Pune, 4, 6 and 8th, because one day in between for the orchestra to travel. And also whenever we have an orchestra, there all these instruments has to be transported. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep one day in between. So if something, some instrument is missing in a flight, we can trace it and get it. I remember quite some time back, we did a festival for the millennium, 1999, December 31st, in Hyderabad in a big riverfront. At that time, we had over two million people at that festival. And we had a harp player from Los Angeles. It was a world, world music festival. We had different groups of people. The harp, we had to bring it from France. Okay. And the player came from, because she was endorsing a, uh, in a company, harp company, so they were kind enough to send the harp. Mm -hmm. I still remember the harp didn't arrive till the previous night. It arrived Friday night at eight o'clock, as it was a late night flight from foreign airlines. Then we have to get the customs to clear it, bring it at that late night, because we needed the harp to do a sound check in the morning. Mm -hmm. So we have had a fantastic uh, uh, experience and uh, tensions and uh, organizing all the festival. So this, this has about two million people, so we were very, very worried, you know, how, two lakhs people, so we were worried about how it's going to go. 
with the amplification, you know, because you know, in the front you can put speakers unless it's a very, very good sound system. If people don't hear you in the back, no you have a problem. Because they start talking, they get distracted. So meticulously we have to make sure that whatever they are hearing is in the front or is also reasonably heard in the back, so people are not disappointed. So this festival has a lot of history and I'm looking forward to it. Every year we do it. This is Pia Krishnan Kuti reporting for The Print. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.